Let the battles begin! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner to my right. He's an orthodox style fighter. Standing five feet, eight inches tall, he went officially at 134 pounds even. Tonight, he enters the cage with a record consisting of three wins against three defeats, representing Adrenaline MMA, and finally of San Bernardino, California. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Anthony, the Culture Rookie. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the cage out of the red corner to my left. He's a boxing and wrestling specialist. Standing five feet, six inches tall, he went officially at 135 pounds even. Tonight, he brings with him a record consisting of five victories against two defeats with one about even. Representing a team quest and fighting out of Murrieta, California, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Mason Eichelberli. Once again, your referee in charge for this championship bout, Michael Jefe Beltran. All right, jump in over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch goes now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go. All right, this is our main event of the night at 1.35, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. There you see Anthony Roki in the blue corner. He'll be fighting Mason Icabellis in the red corner at 135 for the California Fight League strap. Here we go. Both fighters coming out orthodox. A little bit, you can see the experience because they're not coming out there with everything. Wow, what a mean right roundhouse by Mason. But Anthony doing a good job of rotating position. Mason missing with an inside trip, but able to rotate Anthony into the cage. Now, the far arm is up, and you see Mason's arm on the right. Trying Now he's reached down for a double leg. Anthony has tried to change his levels, trying to commit to that guillotine, which could have costed him the defense to that takedown. Once you're in side control from the guillotine, unless you have that chopped arm over, it's very difficult to finish. Anthony seems to be using it to get back to his feet, though. Mason doing a good job of controlling him here. Blocking the position, maybe some knees to the midsection are open. It's, it's very difficult to land strikes when your opponent's trying to stand up and you're trying to continue control down. Mason doing a great job of coming to the front headlock here. But Anthony pressures him in, pops the head out. Wow, Anthony did a great job of getting back to his feet from there. Yeah, and getting out of choke trouble too. Anthony Roki fighting out of adrenaline MMA. I wonder if Anthony was thinking about getting the takedown and that costed him giving up the takedown now to Mason because he kept pressuring him on the fence instead of breaking away and creating space, maybe looking for a strike. Mason with it, another good body lock. He's solid into the guard right now of Anthony, but look how Anthony gets to the fence and he's starting to build up. And off of his back, he's striking too. Mason and Icabellis with a uh, great wrestling background looking to use that here tonight to decide where the fight goes. To try to, he knows that there'll be some missing oh, attempts. Oh my gosh. Yeah, beautiful He posted punch. to measure his strike, and now look, great job getting back to that front headlock. Going from the front headlock to the high C, elevate wow, strong. down, but Anthony is so long and lanky. Now Anthony tried to jump on that guillotine. Mason going to his knees, circling in, got to pass the legs. That's a chest match right there. You see Anthony trying to use it. If he can't get the submission, he's trying to use it to get on top. Beautiful tosses there from Roki. Roki, three in a row. Now, sometimes when you get rolled like that, it can cause you to be a little bit of dizzy. Peruvian necktie attempt. The defense is to push the leg off of your head. This is a very good move, but if Mason brings up his hand and pushes that leg off, you'll fall off into a guillotine. It's hard to finish, though. Up, oh, nice, low risk, high reward. A lot of times though, it's high risk because you end up on your back. Mason driving in, trying to finish the takedown. Anthony has not stopped trying to finish that for the submission this whole round. Mason could be down in the judge's eyes because of the attempts. However, 
Um, Mason was aggr the aggressor and, and forced the takedowns. Either fighter right now could have gotten that round, and whoever is better and um, whoever conditioned better for this fight, I have a feeling is going to pull away. Great. Now, Ike Bellis, I thought, kind of pulled out the first part of the round, and Roki looked great in the second part of the round. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that was amazing. Wow. Both of them connecting, and neither of them getting backing up. Both amazing. Oh, my gosh. Now, Mason closes the distance, but instead of engaging the grappling, breaks off and throws some strikes there. A lot of times you can land a big shot breaking away off of the grappling because your opponent is thinking about defending the, the wrestling. Then his hands are down or he's in bad position. A beautiful head kick. Not sure if he was planning that head kick and if may, it, or if he timed it because it looked could have been to the body. Right away with the high C. Now Anthony... He's had luck in the past pushing away with that knee and getting back up from the head position. Earlier in the first round, the early one in the first round, he did a great job getting right back up. But Mason seems to have secured side control. We've seen him earlier post and then strike with the opposite hand, but it's hard to do in this position. He's trying to use that knee to maybe pin the arm down of Anthony. Anthony holding tight. It can be very frustrating when you want to do violence to somebody and they're holding you tightly. Look how Anthony's stopping Mason from being able to land strikes by just pinching in there. Mason's going to want to try to pin that arm down with his left knee and then continue to keep Anthony flat. Got to be careful and respectful of that triangle that was there. Oh, beautiful leg kicks. Ah, nice. Anthony answering back. Now, right now, in the judges' scorecards, like, they're giving it to Mason because he's still standing and he's winning the position. Oh, got to be careful. Came very close to Just getting missed. a Just up missed. kick there. <laughs> I've seen many fights finished with an up kick to a triangle. Now, once the foot is on the hip like that, Mason needs to cut his hip. You don't want to stay in a position to where your opponent has an advantage. That's all it is. Who's got the better position? This is reminiscent of the early part of round number one when Mason was able to dictate where the fight went. He was able to use that strength, that wrestling background to put Roque down when he needed to. Now we'll see if Roque can turn it on for the second half of round two, the way he turned it on for the second half of round one. As the round continues, you, you've got to address this rubber guard. You've got to force your, you want to force that arm in and swim in between so your opponent can't get a triangle or omoplata. Oh, <laughs> or you can pick him up and slam him. He's so strong. He did that in the first round, too. He lifted Roque up and just held him there for a while in the air. A lot of times I'll tell my fighter to put his forehead underneath his opponent's chin, and you will accidentally headbutt them as you slam them, trying to force yourself out. Um, and it's just out of consequence. This was a much cleaner win of the round for Ike Bellis, although... Ooh, Last minute sub attempt there. Touching the gloves, we've seen that every round, some respect, and then you've seen that every round. Both of them try to knock each other out. <laughs> they both like to come to the center of the cage and exchange. I said with all due respect, I'm gonna try to knock you out. <laughs> and I'll buy you beer afterwards. Oh yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> these fighters. You have to be, oh, beautiful high C. And look at how Anthony used that roundhouse to push away and create space between him and Mason. That, that was beautiful. That was a, a well-placed roundhouse, and instead of just using it for damage, he used it to create space. Ooh, nice hook. Mason caught it coming in. Want to keep the, uh, you want to keep your momentum, so you want to continue to pressure. You don't want to look for one big shot, but I would expect maybe fake the takedown and throw an overhand. Um, especially when you, oh, it looks like Anthony was trying to check hook there. Now they're both, they're both a little bit exhausted. I think whoever starts to pressure more in this round is going to pick up the decision. Ooh. Anthony's, oh. Oh, beautiful shots. Now, Mason's doing a good job of landing these 
these one these entry uh, not entries but these single shots but you need to double up you got to throw multiples because you can't count on that that ending the fight or big shot there's again the high C getting him to the fence and then breaks off and throws an overhand great battle if you're just tuning in you are watching the California Fight League 135 pound title fight here in the main event Victorville California in the high desert Jay Adams alongside Joe Daddy Stevenson. It's, and Anthony Roque is so dangerous. It's difficult to pressure with Anthony when you've been taken down several times because uh, because you know that makes it easier. Now we have some cage cage control, but Anthony has underhooks. Mason's doing a good job of, of controlling with the overhook. Anthony breaks off. Kill anyone's round. Yeah, he does not have a lot of time, though. He's got to let his hands go. It's still close. You always want to see multiples. It's just a numbers game. The more you throw it out there, the more... Oh, beautiful <laughs> sidekick. Sweet chin music. Ten seconds. There it is. Ten seconds in the fight for the strap. Somebody's going to get hit right now. The crowd wants oh, a trade. The crowd. crowd wants a trade. Good scrap. Good fight for the title. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a round of applause for both of these warriors. Three fantastic rounds of action. And now to the judges' scorecards, we go for the official decision. Both judges, Chris Lieben and Rafael Davis, both see the bout 30 to 27. While Jackie Dakin has it 29 28. All in favor of your winner. By unanimous decision. And now the CFL 135 pound champion. From Marietta, California.